Hello, this is Father Gregory, and this is my Monday musing. I had a busy weekend last weekend, uh, but it was a joyful one, nevertheless. So last Saturday morning, we had the first reconciliation of second graders. So this was their first confession, and um, it was in preparation for their first communion. And I wish you could just be there to see how radiant uh, their faces were after they uh, finished their reconciliation and went uh, to their parents, I recommended them, I encouraged them that after the first reconciliation, they should go out and have a little celebration uh, because this is such a milestone and they are being made little saints by God uh, through the sacrament of reconciliation. So it was definitely something worth celebrating. And also Sunday afternoon, uh, we had the confirmation retreat for the year two confirmation teens and I also was there to speak to them about uh, reconciliation, which they will do in a few weeks. And hopefully um, they will be able to uh, receive the grace of the Holy Spirit uh, next month with a clean and pure heart. That there's no uh, obstruction to God's grace and that God will really enkindle the heart uh, of their, 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 their uh, young minds. Uh, so they're on fire with God's love. Um, so definitely keep the young people at our parish in your prayers. Keep uh, all the catechists, parents, family members in your prayer as well. And while Father Carl is still on retreat, uh, the work of the parish continues. Uh, we had another meeting of the parish pastoral council, and we are continuing to think about how we can make ourselves available to you, make ourselves visible to you, so that we can serve you better, so that you can reach us more easily, so we can be here to be a service for you. And also, um, if you have any concerns, suggestions, recommendations, uh, needs, you can reach us better. We're working on that. Um, but for now, uh, if you have anything that you would like to suggest uh, or communicate with the uh, parish uh, pastoral council members, here is uh, the email address. So it's ppc at stdambanisha.org, ppc, which stands for Parish Pastoral Council, at stdambanisha.org. Again, it's ppc at stdambanisha.org. And there is a member of the council uh, who checks uh, this inbo inbox regularly. I'm sure she's so eager to, ch uh, to hear from you. Um, regarding your suggestions, concerns, recommendations, uh, needs, uh, requests, so, so to see how we can um, serve you better. But also, um, in this coming week, there are a few things to note. Uh, first of all, um, on Friday, uh, we have the gift ministry. Uh, the three-part series continues. We'll have the, th the third installment uh, featuring Deacon Mike. He will be uh, sharing a little bit about marriage. So this gift ministry uh, stands for Growing in Faith Together. This is a ministry uh, for married couples. And um, the, the gathering uh, begins at 7 o'clock at the parish hall, and the main sharing begins at 7.30. So I would like to encourage all the married couples uh, to attend. And even, I think, I would say, you know, couples uh, preparing for marriage, getting ready to get married, I think I'm sure you will learn a lot about um, you know marriage from um, from couples who are you know married for many many years. And also um, on Saturday, uh, February 11th, we will have a healing mass. This is because this day is the feast day of Our Lady of Lourdes. As you know, um, there there have been many many miracles um, in Lourdes, from Lourdes through the intercession. Of Our Lady of Lourdes, especially through this um, this miraculous spring that sprang up uh, in Lourdes from the, near the grotto, and because Our Lady of Lourdes has inspired thousands of people to have their faith in God for their healing, many as I said miracles have been worked, and for the same reason uh, Pope John Paul II made it also the World Day of the Sick, and so to mark this very very meaningful uh, day. Uh, Father David and I will celebrate a healing mass. So what is a healing mass? 
what it is is that um, during the Mass, uh, the sacrament of the anointing of the sick will be celebrated. It will be given. Uh, the anointing will be given within this healing Mass. And um, I would like to invite all of our parishioners who are infirmed, whether young or old, and also um, those with chronic illnesses, especially uh, the elderly ones, to come. It will happen at 1.30 this coming Saturday, uh, February 11th. And I would really like to invite you to come take advantage of this opportunity for God's healing and God's comfort in, in your soul, God's um, strengthening of your soul so that you can uh, face all the inconveniences, pains and aches uh, with a greater courage. And it is a consecration. A sanctifying of our suffering. I think this beauty, the, this is the beauty of our Catholic faith. We do not suffer in vain. Suffer is something not to be merely avoided. Um, the suffer um, that we all endure um, has a value in there. Uh, through the cross, of course, cross of Christ, um, our suffering has been sanctified, and it is, it is beneficial not only for our own salvation, not only for the forgiveness of our, our own sins, but it has uh, a beneficial effect, this positive effect towards the salvation of the whole world. So again, I would just have to, like to invite uh, all uh, the parishioners who are ill and suffering, elderly, to come um, for this healing Mass, which will happen at 1.30 uh, this coming Saturday, February 11th. Another thing I would like to uh, notify you is an upcoming book study that I will be leading. It's a six-part series featuring this book, uh, Jesus and the Jewish Root of the Eucharist. Um, it's written by Brad Petrie, a well-known young uh, biblical scholar. Um, this book talks about how the Mass and the Sacrament of the Eucharist actually has a very, very deep root in ancient Judaism. It's not something that Jesus just invented out of the blue. No, it actually has a very a, a deep and ancient root in ancient Judaism. And by understanding um, this, uh, we will have a deeper appreciation of the scripture when we read it. We will know what the, uh, the authors of the Bible are talking about, especially when we delve, in, delve into the Old Testament and when we receive the Eucharist, when we participate in the Mass, we'll also see that actually it's something that goes as deep as God's promise to the patriarchs in the Old Testament. Um, it will start on Wednesday, um, March the 1st, and it, it will uh, be repeated uh, five times. It's a six-part series. Uh, so basically, we'll start on the Wednesday after Ash Wednesday. Ash Wednesday, we're all busy. So we'll start uh, the week after Ash Wednesday. Uh, it will happen at 6.30 every Wednesday evening for six weeks at the parish hall. And the reason why I mentioned it so early is that um, if you would like to purchase this book, we have it available at the parish office, and we ask for $15 per copy. Uh, if you have your own copy, great. Uh, or if you want to order your own, great. Uh, but if you want to uh, come uh, to the parish office and buy a copy, as I said, it's $15 per copy. And the reason why... I want to mention it so early on is so that you can start reading. This is really a fascinating book. And the reason why I chose this book is not, not only has to do with Lent um, and also the Lord's, our Lord's suffering um, on the cross and Him being the, the Lamb of God who is uh, the, the, um, the High Priest of the New Testament, uh, but also uh, it has to do with uh, the Eucharistic revival that the U.S. Bishop is promoting this year and in the years to come. I guarantee you, by coming to um, this book study, you will deepen your understanding and your appreciation for our Lord's um, gift, this most beautiful gift and the greatest gift of Himself, the Eucharist. And you will definitely get out more when you come for Mass. And speaking of that, speaking of Mass, um, I want to also issue a call 
to um, the wider parish community. If you would like to serve as the Eucharistic minister, the extraordinary Eucharistic minister or lector, uh, please uh, contact the parish office or contact me. Um, or I will definitely sign you up. Um, there's more information in the bulletin because um, we, we need more. Um, soon we will have, we'll go back to having two lectures uh, per mass. And also we may uh, start, depending on uh, Bishop Soto's permission, uh, distributing uh, the chalice uh, for, the, uh, for the communion. And for that reason, we also need more trained Eucharistic ministers. Uh, so if you feel called by God to serve in these capacities, uh, please contact us following the, the directions on the parish bulletin. And that's all I have for now. Um, may you have a blessed week as we um, continue our journey uh, to begin, uh, to prepare ourselves to begin uh, Lent. As Brother Kevin Peter mentioned last weekend, we have entered um, this period that we prepare ourselves for Lent. We have passed the um, Septuagesima Sunday, and this coming Sunday, traditionally will not be known as the Sexagesima Sunday. So Lent is coming closer and closer, and I would encourage you to pray about uh, how uh, God is calling you to live out our Lenten journey this year. So in the meantime, may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all.